All my books start with the same sentence. This sentence is, something has happened again. <laughs> and uh, my books are more about laughter than about thrill, I think. At least this is the reason why Austrian people read my books, not because they want to be scared to death, <laughs> but because they want to be entertained a little bit. Something has happened again. Spring's a glorious time of year, though. Poems and all that, and everybody knows it's in springtime that life awakens. That's why nobody wanted to believe it at first, when suddenly it was the other way around. Times change, though. What we would have given in the end if it had only been as bad as it had looked in the beginning, and that was only three weeks later. Still spring, and then the summer ruined by rain, you can forget about July, but a first-rate spring. And if you'd seen Brenner sitting there at the Löschenkohl grill, you would have been hard-pressed to guess what had dragged him down there. You might have even mistaken him for a day trip, but taking advantage of the spring day for a jaunt into East Styria, and it would have been wiser for him to take a day trip through Styria's sleepy vineyard towns, enjoy the countryside a little, taste a little wine, eat a little fried chicken, and suddenly you are feeling like all's just a little bit well in the world. Still, never in all my days will I understand how a thing like that could happen in a place like this. The spring wields such power, though a person can't not feel nature, and you would have been w wading knee-deep in blood when all of a sudden it's love you are thinking about. Now, Brenner may have been at the Löschenkohl grill waiting for his food, but in his thoughts he was someplace else entirely. He was checking how long it had been since his fiancé had run off, believe it or not, twelve and a half years. It wasn't just spring that had him thinking like this, though. No, whenever Brenner ate fried chicken, he'd automatically think of Feeny. Her name was actually Josephine. Needless to say, everyone called her Feeny. And you'd be hard-pressed to find a person who liked to eat fried chicken as much as Feeny did, because she'd eat two, three chicken every week, practically addicted. And to watch Feeny gnaw the bones clean, that was a real pleasure, cannibal, cannibals no match. So when Brenda walked into Löschenkohl's dining room, Feeny came to mind, of course, because Löschenkohl's is the kind of chicken place that, if you can imagine a furniture showroom or those garages where they park the jumbo jets and the entire airplane garage is full of people eating fried chicken. But then Brenna got interrupted and couldn't give Feeny another thought, and besides, he shouldn't have been thinking about her for all that long anyway, because one thing you can't forget, only engaged two weeks. And so there wasn't and so there wasn't all that much for him to remember, except for her incessant chicken eating and her huge wreck, of course. Feeney had said it was on account of the chickens being fed so many hormones. But enough about Feeney, because old man Löschenkohl himself was bringing Brenner his fried chicken, and you are going to be wondering why old man Löschenkohl would personally serve Brenner his fried chicken. Pay attention, though, because this is interesting. Löschenkohl offers his hand to Brenner and says, Löschenkohl. And Brenner lifts his rear half a millimeter of the wooden bench and says, Brenner. Old man Löschenkohl took a seat at Brenner's table. But these days, of course, when two people are sitting together and each is waiting for the other to say something, well, conversation's a little tricky. Dig in, Löschenkohl went on, and then they sat next to each other in silence until Brenner had finished the first piece of chicken. And one thing you can't forget. There are four pieces in a Löschenkohl chicken, and even if you eat just two of them, you're going to bust a gut.